Let Q be a polytope in Rn, and let C be a polyhedral cone in Rn. Then the set Q plus C is a polyhedron. Here, the plus sign denotes the Minkowski sum of sets. So this is, in effect, the set of all P plus Q, where P comes from Q, and lowercase Q comes from C. The proof of this result is not difficult, but what is remarkable and much more difficult to prove is that every polyhedron can be decomposed as Q plus C for some polytope Q and some polyhedral cone C. And that's the content of the next theorem. Suppose that P is this polyhedron here, and F1 up to Fr are the minimal phases of the polyhedron P. And for each minimal phase Fi, we pick an arbitrary element x superscript i. Then p can be written as the convex hull of x1 up to xr plus this polyhedral cone here. This polyhedral cone here is sometimes known as the characteristic cone of p or the recession cone of p. And one can prove that any time a polyhedron p is decomposed as the sum of a polytope plus a polyhedral cone, the polyhedral cone is unique it has to be the characteristic cone of P. We will not prove that result, but we will look at a sketch of the proof of this theorem. But before we prove this, let's look at an example. Suppose this is my P, and here is a sketch of P. Now the minimal phases of this polyhedron are this here and this here. And so this theorem says P is the convex hull of 1, 0, 0, 1, plus its recession cone, which is simply the set of x1, x2, satisfying x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 0, x1 greater than or equal to 0, and x2 greater than or equal to 0. But notice that this inequality is redundant. We don't really need this. So in effect, the characteristic cone of P is the first quadrant. So now let's look at a sketch of the proof of this theorem. We'll call this set Q and we'll call this set C. Now clearly Q plus C is a subset of P. So we're going to show the other inclusion. To do this, let F be a non-empty phase of P. And we're going to prove by induction on the dimension of F that F is a subset of Q plus C. Now, a non-empty phase of P with a minimum dimension must be a minimal phase of P. So that is our basis for induction. Because F is a minimal phase, F equals Fi for some i in 1 up to r. Now, take an arbitrary element in F that is not equal to xi. Let d be u minus xi. Because Fi is a minimal phase, there exists a subsystem a prime x greater than or equal to b prime of a x greater than or equal to b with rank of a prime equals the rank of a such that f i is the set of x in r n satisfying a prime x equals b prime. So the minimal phase is an affine subspace and we'll represent it by a line and x i is going to be somewhere here and u is going to be somewhere there and this vector is going to be d so a prime d is 0 and since d is not identically 0 d is a non-zero vector in the null space of a prime and because of this and that a prime is a sub matrix of a we must also have a d equals 0 in other words, D is a member of C because in order for D to be in C, A times D is at least 0, but we have exactly 0 here, so that's fine. So what this means is U is XI plus D, but XI is in Q, and D is in C, and so U is in Q plus C. That means that F is a subset of Q plus C. And that establishes the basis case for induction. So the next thing we need to do is 
we want to pick some non-minimal phase of P and prove that it is again a subset of Q plus C. As before, we pick an arbitrary element from F and let Fi be a minimal phase contained in F. And we take D to be U minus X superscript I. If D is in C, then we are done because U will be in Q plus C. So suppose that D is not in C. Now we let A prime X greater than equal to B prime be the subsystem of A X greater than equal to B consisting of all the inequalities satisfied with equality by all elements of F. And let a superscript plus x greater than equal to b superscript plus denote the rest of the system. Because d is not in c, that means it is not true that a d is at least zero. a times d has a negative component. So what does this mean? Well, we have x i and u both lying on the face f, and this is the vector d. So if we start at x i and move in the direction of d, we'll eventually hit u. But if we continue to move in the direction of u, we'll eventually come to a point where one of these inequalities will be violated if we continue any further. And say that point is x i plus lambda d. Now, all the points that we travel along the way are also in f. And so this point here is going to be on a phase that is properly contained in F. And by induction hypothesis, this point must be in Q plus C. So we have xi in Q plus C, xi plus lambda d in Q plus C, and u is in the line segment between these two points. So u must also in Q plus C. And that proves the theorem. Now, an easy corollary of this theorem is the following. If P happens to be a polytope, then all the minimal phases consist of singletons of extreme points of P. And the characteristic cone can only have the zero vector as the only element. And so we can say that if P is a polytope, then it is the convex hull of its extreme points.